Hey guys, welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking lactic acid. There are so many different exfoliating acids on the market. Honestly, it can get a little baffling knowing which is the right one for your skin type and your skin's needs. I've tried all the exfoliating acid types over the years and throughout my skincare journey, and I honestly have to say, lactic acid is my favorite. It's the one that's given me the best results in terms of vibrancy to the skin, luminosity, helping to eliminate some fine lines and wrinkles and tackle my hyperpigmentation. I wanna sit down and share with you my thoughts and feelings on lactic acid in today's video. I'm going to share with you the results that I got from using it on my own skin, some hints, tips and hacks for how you can incorporate it into your own skincare routine and of course the very best lactic acid products that are on the market. So sit back, relax and let's talk all things lactic acid. Now, before we get into this, I like to give the usual disclaimer that the experiences I'm sharing in this video are unique to my skin type. We all have our individual skin types and needs, and products will react differently on different people. You've always got to bear that in mind, because what works for one person won't always work exactly the same on another, which is why your feedback is so, so important. So I would encourage everybody to sound off in the comment section below with what your experiences with lactic acid has been. Don't forget to include your skin type so we can kind of compare and contrast. While you're down there, don't forget to give this video a a big thumbs up and a like because honestly it supports me and the channel so so much and I would love you forever. But should we cut the waffle and actually talk about what lactic acid is? What makes it special? Well lactic acid is traditionally derived from milk. When you used to hear like the ancient Egyptians using yogurt on the skin and getting great results that was because the lactic acid that's contained in these milk products actually can give a light exfoliation and can deliver some really great results. Today lactic acid tends to be synthesized in a lab or plant derived which is fantastic if, like me, you're sensitive to lactose and obviously you don't want to be putting milk-derived lactic acid on the skin, that shouldn't be a problem because just about all of the products I've checked on the market are either plant-derived or synthesized in a lab. Whilst lactic acid is classed as an alpha hydroxy acid, so it sits in the same family as glycolic acid and mandelic acid, it actually works very differently. It's an exfoliator as with all of its other alpha hydroxy acids, which means it melts the bonds which hold the dead skin cells onto the glowing, vibrant skin beneath. It also increases cellular turnover, which is fantastic for eradicating minor fine lines and wrinkles, and also to aiding with the eradication of hyperpigmentation. So far, so good. But what makes lactic acid so special is it's also a powerful humectant. So humectants actually retain moisture in them. They attract and retain moisture in the skin. This is fantastic. If you're looking for an um, alpha hydroxy acid that won't strip and dry the skin, like glycolic acid tends to, lactic acid could be your best friend. Also, the more hydrated, the more plump the skin is, then the healthier it is, and also the less noticeable fine lines and wrinkles will be, which is why I think people tend to get a lot better results from lactic acid than maybe what they think they're gonna get using a higher strength glycolic acid, for example. That was certainly my experience, which is kind of what I want to come on now. So I started my exfoliating acid journey with glycolic acid, and I stuck rigidly to it for years. However, I kind of worked out that maybe it wasn't doing everything I wanted in my own skin, and I captured my thoughts and feelings on glycolic acid in a recent video, which I'll link up there. It took me a long time to move away from glycolic acid, which has the reputation of being the most potent, the strongest exfoliator on the market, and actually switched to lactic acid. Honestly, when I did, blown away. So lactic acid has a relatively large molecule size. The molecule size matters when it comes to exfoliating acids because it dictates how deep into the skin it's able to penetrate. So it moderates the depth of exfoliation you're going to get. Glycolic acid has a smaller molecule size, meaning it's able to penetrate deeper. That can be great in terms of the benefits, but it can also dial up the sensitivity, the redness, and any side effects that you get from using the ingredient. Lactic acid has a much larger molecule size, so it's much more surface exfoliation. This is fantastic because it makes it more compatible with sensitive skin. It won't give you as much redness, irritation, potential peeling when you first introduce it to your skincare routine. I've been using it for the past 12 months and honestly, blown away. I find that the level of luminosity in my skin is so much greater than using glycolic acid. I also feel that the fine lines and wrinkles I was starting to see around the crow's feet area are much diminished. My skin is less dry than it used to be. That's good for me because I have very oily, acne-prone skin, but it's also prone to dryness if I use the wrong products. And I found that glycolic acid was stripping and drying my skin. I haven't had any of these problems with lactic acid. And honestly, people have been so complimentary of my skin since I started transitioning to lactic acid, which gives 
gives me the skin confidence that I want. And honestly, I put it all down to switching up my exfoliator. That humectant is absolutely key. So how should you use, if you're already sold on it, how should you use your lactic acid? For me, I switched down from using it daily, which I still thought, even though it's gentle, large molecule size and hydrating, was just a little bit much for my skin. And I now use a relatively high concentration of lactic acid around twice a week. I find that gives me the great exfoliation. It increases the cellular turnover, which I love. It also helps to minimize the fine lines and wrinkles because whilst it increases cellular turnover, it also plumps out those areas, being a fantastic humectant, which I really, really love. I get all those results just using a relatively high concentration twice a week. Of course, if you've got sensitive skin, I'd probably say go for a lower concentration and then dial up the frequency, working out what your skin can tolerate. We all need to match the products we use to our skin's needs. And so be mindful, listen to the skin. And if you find that your skin's getting a little irritated, maybe a little redness prone, just dial back the frequency of the lactic acid because whilst it's gentle, it is still a powerful exfoliant. In terms of some people say, do I need to use extra sun protection when using lactic acid? Do I need to be mindful of contraindications with other products? You should always be using a sun protection of an SPF 30 or above every single day and reapplying as required and as stated on the bottle. So I kind of think that applies whatever your skincare routine. And if you've got lactic acid in, you should be doing that anyway. In terms of contraindications, what it doesn't really work that well with, I find that lactic acid is often delivered in a low pH environment, which is great because it dials up the efficacy of the product. But you need to be mindful of not to put it directly next to peptides, which it could denature. Use something in between to buffer. So such as cleanse, then use your lactic acid as the second step. Wait like a minute and then use something like a hyaluronic acid serum, something that's pH neutral to around a 5.5, and then use your peptides and the rest of your serums. This just neutralizes the skin, brings back that equilibrium that the skin enjoys, and means that the rest of your serums will just apply that a little bit more effective. This buffering technique is what I would recommend to everyone. Other than that, it's a really simple ingredient to include. It shouldn't get too many side effects. It should pair well with most other um, preparations that you have in your skincare routine, and you should get amazing results from about the two week point. So far, so good, but it is really important to choose the right product. When it comes to lactic acid, my absolute ride or die favorites are these. This is the Ordinary Lactic Acid 10%. I love, love, love this for so many reasons. I started on my lactic acid journey with this, and honestly, I never shifted. I've stayed with this throughout my entire lactic acid journey, and I still love it to this day. They do a 5% concentration, which is also fantastic if you have very sensitive skin, or maybe want to use it little and often. I use this twice a week because it's a higher strength product and get great results. The 5% you could use every single day as long as you don't have too much sensitivity in the skin and I'd obviously ask that you monitor that and work out how often you can tolerate it in your skin. The 10% twice a week, perfection. It's formulated with a little hyaluronic acid, which again will give some extra humectant qualities, meaning I'd say of all of the lactic acids I've tried, this is the one that I think has the most significant impact on my fine lines and wrinkles, and really has helped bring back that glow and that evenness to my complexion, which I love. I'll leave a link to this, as I will all of the products mentioned below, if you do wanna check it out in more detail, read the reviews, check the price point, all that good stuff. But I really, really like this product, and honestly, I can't see myself moving from it anytime soon. If you wanna move away from the I appreciate it's not for everyone. One product that I would definitely, definitely recommend is the Smooth Out by Geek and Gorgeous. This is actually a blend. So this takes glycolic acid and lactic acid and blends them together. The reason I call this one out is if you're a glycolic acid fangirl and you think, do I really want to switch to lactic acid? I'm a little bit, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I don't necessarily want to make the full switch. Using a combination can be a great way of doing this. If you have chicken skin, the bumps on the backs of the arms, which can really impact our skin confidence and something that I suffer with, I found that the Smooth Out by Geek and Gorgeous, hands down, the very best treatment. The reason for this is this is caused by keratin plugs, which cause the little bumps on the skin. And scientific studies have shown that lactic acid is the most effective treatment for dissolving these keratin plugs. Better than glycolic acid, better than salicylic acid. So this is a really great option if you have some, you know, textural irregularities on the body that you want to tackle. I'd reach for the Geek and Gorgeous Smooth Out, which honestly, I'd say has improved the chicken skin on the backs of my arms and tops of my thighs by around 60, 65% which honestly, I've never achieved from any other product. You could use the Ordinary, which is much more affordable, lactic acid on the 
these areas as well, but I find it takes a little bit longer to show those results because the concentration of lactic acid in the Geek and Gorgeous product is 2%. So it's much lower than what you get in one of these, dialed up by the inclusion of that glycolic acid alongside it. I also love, love, love the Inculist lactic acid. Such an affordable serum and I love it. You don't get as much redness, prickling and sensitivity from using the Inculist product because it's a much more balanced pH. That will impact the efficacy of the lactic acid, but a little bit of gentle and often can often be the way that it's best for people's skin. I like to go in with something gentle and use it in the long term to get maximum benefits. I'd say the strength of the Ordinary is definitely up there. The Inculus is more gentle, so suitable for more sensitive skin types. So people that may be new to acid exfoliation and want to take it gentle at the start, the Inculus product could be fantastic. There's also some really good lactic acid cleansers. I tend not to use these because I find you're leaving it on the skin 60 seconds. You're not getting maximum efficacy. But if you want to just dip your toe into the realms of exfoliating acids, or you have super sensitive skin, so don't want to leave on treatment, then lactic acid cleansers can be really great. And I've left some of my favorites in the description box below, alongside a little bit of blurb of who I think they're most suitable for. So definitely worth checking out if you're a little bit wary of using a standalone serum and a leave-on treatment and want something more gentle. A cleanser could be your best friend. So there you have it, guys. My ultimate rundown of lactic acid. The pros, the cons, and everything you need to know if you want to include it in your skincare routine. I honestly would say, if you are using a glycolic acid and are really scared to switch to something that's bad, just more gentle, don't. I put off doing this for years and it's my biggest skincare regret because my skin has honestly been glowing to the gods since I started using lactic acid. And I credit this ingredient with kind of transforming my own skincare routine and how much confidence I have in my skin. So definitely, definitely worth a try. I've left all the links you need below if you want to check anything out in more detail. And wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.